Hey, good morning, everybody. This is Mr. Ainsworth, and we're going to get into review number five, believe it or not. Okay, so uh, get your calculators out, get your red pens, pencils, all that good stuff. Get your notes out, too. All right, so let's put this off on the side. You need your calculator out. You need your notes to refer to. Notes to uh, refer to. So one, two here, three, uh, red pen. All right, to annotate and pencil and everything. Okay, so and pencil here. Do your corrections in red, refer to your notes, use your calculator when needed. All right, so here we go. We're going to solve this equation two different ways. And the first way we're going to do is we're going to distribute through. Okay, we're going to distribute the 6 through twice. So 6 times 2x is 12x, minus 6 times 5 is 30, equals 36. I'm going to add the opposite here. So I'm going to add 30 to both sides. And I cancel out the opposites. I've got 12x is equal to 66. I need to divide by 12. All right, and get x is equal to 66 divided by 12. Divides in 5 times. 5 times 12 is 60, remainder of 6. So 6 twelfths here. And so x is equal to 5 and 1 half after you simplify. All right, but you don't have to do it that way. You could uh, divide through by 6 first, because it's times right here, right? 6 times something. So the inverse of multiplying is dividing. So I could divide both sides by 6 first. And I get uh, 2x minus 5 equals 6. All right, add uh, 5 to both sides. And cancel out the opposites. You get 2x equals 11. Divide by 2. And 11 divided by 2 is 5 and a half. So you get the same result two different ways. All right? Number three, we got to uh, convert inch, uh, miles to inches. All right, so let's write small. Here we go. So three miles. I know that for every one mile, there is 5,280 feet, as you guys already know. All right. I also know that for every one foot, all right, you got to put in the denominator to make them cancel. There's 12 inches. All right, so let's get our calculators going here. Let's get mine. Uh, I use the T84 with you guys as you guys already know. So let's bring that off to the side. All right, clear it out. And let's multiply 3 times 5,280 times 12. And hit the go button, that's about 190,080. So 190,080, what? Well, let me see, miles cancel out. The feet cancel out, and I end up with inches. So those are my end units, right? So I have inches here. That's a lot of inches in three miles, okay? All right, next one here. Oh, by the way, this is a video, right? So what do you do? You pause and play. If I go too fast, rewind it. Pause me. Listen to it again. Do whatever it takes. All right, pause and play. Pause and play throughout the video. All right, that's what it's intended for. All right, so let's uh, solve this inequality. Let's uh, subtract 3 first. I get negative 4x is less than 12. I want to divide through by a negative, but remember, when you do that, switch the inequality. Switch inequality when you divide by a negative. So you get x greater than negative 3. Notice the switch right here from less than to greater than. So get out your red pen, uh, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. All numbers greater than negative 3 don't include negative 3, but they include all the numbers to the right. OK? All right, three product rule. OK, I see this first product, 6 minus 7 here, divided by 14. So first product is 6 minus 7 times 1 is 7, divided by 14. I get negative 1 14. It works for it adding and subtracting. So first product here is 9 plus now because we're adding 11 divided by 33, and that's 20 30 thirds. Pretty easy when you when you apply it. All right, so let's solve and justify each step. Okay, we're going to solve it, but let's justify as we go. So here we go. I'm going to distribute through first. And notice what I just said. I just said distribute through, right? So my first justification is the distributive property. All right, I'm going to subtract uh, 5x on both sides. I get a negative 3x minus 10 is equal to 3 after I cancel out the opposites. I just subtracted 
So I got to quote the subtraction property. Now I'm going to add 10 to both sides. Oh, I just added, right? So I'm going to use the addition property. What do I get? Negative 3x is equal to 13. Now, last step, I need to divide by negative 3. That's the division property. Okay? Of equality. And I get x is equal to negative 4. Let me see. 3 divides into 13 four times with one remaining. So one third here. Negative 4 and a third. Okay? Easy. Whatever you do, you just write it down. Okay, gallons to cups. Now, on this one here, you might want to refer to your lesson 12 here. Now, where is lesson 12? Oh, here it is, right here. I'm going to bring it down right there. Now, the reason why lesson 12 is important because it has the conversion factors, okay? All right. So we want to convert what we want to convert. All right. Gallons to cups. All right. So we know that there's four quarts, right? Look right here. Four, excuse me, four cups per gallon. But we should also know there's four quarts, all right, is equal to one gallon. Hmm. Four quarts equals one gallon. Now, if you don't know that, you can do this. You can go fishing. I just want to show you something. This is what I do all the time. Go to Google and you type in how many uh, quarts all right, in a gallon. And you'll notice it's right here, right? So you just type your question in. And there <coughs> it says a gallon is four times bigger than a quart, okay? Which means there's four quarts per gallon. Okay? So you go to, you know, any one of the sites. And it says one gallon equals four quarts. So you can find what you're looking for anywhere on the web. I mean, it's it's pretty easy to do. All right, I just wanted to show that to you. So you can use your notes. And if it's not in your notes, go fishing. So four quarts per gallon, add that in. So Let's use that. So we're going to take eight gallons. All right, we're going to multiply it by one gallon equals four quarts. Go back to the review here, or my lesson on unit conversion. We know there are four cups per quart, so let's use that. So for for one quart, there's four cups. And that's what we want to convert it to, gallons to cups. So we just multiply eight times four times four. Easy. Eight times four times four. That's 128. So it's 128 cups in eight gallons. And you also want to show the canceling. Boom, right there, the gallons cancel, the quarts cancel. You end up with cups. Easy. All right, the next one here, we're going to solve for x. And x is located inside the group here. So I think uh, there's a, you could distribute through. Uh, I think that would be the harder way, though. I'm going to handle it through multiplication because I know how to multiply by the reciprocal. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the equation here, 3 fourths times x plus 5 equals y, and I'm going to multiply both sides by the reciprocal in red, which is 4 thirds times 4 thirds. So multiply by the reciprocal. Now, this is not the only way you could do it. Some people uh, might distribute through, and if you do, you're going to get a different looking answer, but it's going to be correct. All right, now 12 divided by 12 right here, that's just 1. And because of that, you get x plus 5 is equal to 4 times y divided by 3. So 4, uh, come on, 4y divided by 3, or 4 thirds y. Now all you have to do is subtract 5, cancel out the opposites, and you get x is equal to 4y thirds, or 4 thirds y, minus 5. Or you can write it as x is equal to 4 thirds y minus 5, either one. Same equations, guys. Okay, and that's one way you can do it. There's another way. If you choose to distribute, it's going to look a little bit different. All right, next one. I went from seven to nine. Oh, that was really good. Okay, Ainsworth can't count, but that's okay. I can teach math. Here we go. Uh, you want to solve the compound inequality and then graph it. All right, so we're going to add one to all three parts. Okay, we get negative nine less than or equal to 
3x less than 6. Step 2, you want to divide by 3 on all three parts. And you want to get, when you do that, you get negative 3 less than or equal to x now is less than 2. And this means all numbers between negative 3 and 2, including, because of the equal sign here, including negative 3. Let me write that out in red. This, this is what it means, okay? All numbers between negative 3 and 2, including negative 3. So it's going to be, here's negative 3. So I'm going to go closed here at negative 3, open it to, and all numbers in between. Okay, or you can go straight on the number line. Okay, all numbers between negative 3 and 2, this is a negative 3, and 2, including negative 3 because there's an equal sign here. Uh, so it includes negative 3, but not 2 because it's strictly less than 2. X can be any number in there, okay? Uh, this is less than 1-8 uh, in the notes. So if you want to refer to that, be my guess. Okay, number 10. You want to solve for P. P is everywhere. So we got to do a lot of distributing here uh, and then collecting like terms. So here we go. We got 2P minus 3. We read from left to right. So we do mathematics left to right. We distribute the 4 twice and you get AP minus 4. And then you have to distribute the negative 3 twice and you get minus uh, 15 plus now 3P. All right, because a negative times a negative is a positive. And now we reorder things and we regroup. So 2P minus 3 is equal to 8P and 3P, that's 11P, add like terms. A minus 4 and a minus 15 is a minus 19. So we collect like terms. I'm talking about this right here. Minus 14 minus 15 is a minus 19. Then gathered like terms. So minus P minus, uh, excuse me, minus 11P minus 11P. So you get negative 9P minus 3 is equal to negative 19. Add 3. And you get negative 9P is equal to negative 16. Divide through by negative 9. And you get P is equal to 16 ninths, which is equal to 1 and 7 ninths. Okay? And that's all there is to it. All right, number 11. Solve and graph again. Okay, you could distribute through the negative 2, or uh, you could just divide by negative 2, because it's times, right? So I'm going to divide by negative 2 and switch the inequality. So here we go. Uh, we've got x plus 3 is greater than negative 2. See the switch from less than to greater than, because I divided through by negative. That's my method, okay? Now I subtract 3. And you get x greater than negative 5. Get out your red pen. This is all numbers greater than negative 5. So it's all numbers to the right of, uh, of negative 5. Easy. Okay, number 12. Let's evaluate a function here. Now f of x means whatever x is. you got to substitute it in wherever you see x. And I see x in two locations. So I need to substitute it here and here. Okay, SUB stands for substitute. So my f of 2 should look like 2 squared minus 3 times 2 plus 4. Why? Because I had to substitute here and here in the same locations. All right. Now I know that 2 squared is 4 minus 3 times 2 is 6 plus 4. That's negative 2 plus 4. And that's going to be equal to a 2. So my f of 2 equals 2. Where x is 2 and y is 2. No, that's all there is to that one, okay? That's just fun a little function notation. You can refer back to one of your lessons on that one. Okay, last one, number 13. Real simple here. The inverse of dividing by 5 is multiplying by 5. So I'm going to multiply by 5, simplify. And you get x is equal to 15 uh, eighths, which is equal to 1 and 7 eighths. That's all you have to do, okay? All right, now this is a video, so you can uh, rewind, pause, play, rewind, and review any portion you want. But that's it right there. That's review five. Your test is tomorrow. So I'm Mr. Ainsworth. I'm signing out. I'll see you in my next lesson.